that. Yeah, sure. So yeah, you know, I joined the Marine Corps because it seemed like the way to get out of this little town. There weren't a lot of paths out. I wasn't a good student. I didn't care about school. Um, and I really, I knew then that I really wanted to play music, but it still seemed like something that I, you know, that wasn't for me. Like I wasn't, I wasn't confident. I just thought, well, I'm not good enough to be in a band. I, I'm not, you know, that's, that's what other people do. That's what, you know, better looking, skinnier, more talented people do. And then, you know, then I moved to Seattle and then I found out who's doing it. And I was like, oh, shit, I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think that the Marine Corps possibly gave you that discipline to learn an instrument? Because that is, there is a certain amount of discipline that it takes, especially in the initial stages. You know, you have to be taught the right fundamentals, but you do have to have that sort of perseverance and discipline to learn, a, you know, an instrument, don't you think? The thing that I learned in the marine corps is how to suffer really you know okay. um and i'm i'm glad that i had the opportunity to serve you know uh oh did i lose you are we no there? no are no you're right? fine okay. yeah we're fine right now um right now i i think only because of the uh only because of the wi-fi connection we have to like sort of slow down our transitions a lot of times gotcha. vic gets uh he gets really you know as you as you know folks listening uh, Vic, our producer, likes to go, you know, completely Hollywood uh, movie yeah. budget on a on a shoestring budget on a on a YouTube budget, which is zero. That's great. <laughs> but he's uh, doing yeah. good. We got gotcha. you. I learned, yeah, in the Marine Corps, I learned how to suffer. You know, you learn how to like, you learn how to take your medicine. You learn how to like. I learned how much punishment my body could take, and still get up. Um. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. So, well, that got you into obviously getting to where we, you know, close to where we are now. Yeah. Because you're, you're in the Seattle scene. You are actually in the Seattle scene playing with all these bands that are like, I get basically. Seattle, yeah. I lie my way into a band. <laughs> that, the, eat the feeling these guys say, oh, we need a bass player. I was like, that was great. And they were just all bummed, you know. And I was like, what's up? And they were like, our bass player just quit. And like a light went off, you know? I was like, this is, you, this, is, this, is, this is my opportunity to get into a band, right? And, uh, you know, I, like I said, I didn't give a squirt of piss about the bass. I didn't know that a bass could be a melodic instrument, really. I mean, I knew like Steve Harris and Getty Lee, but that was like black magic. Again, you know, two 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 bass players we left off the list when we were talking about bass players earlier I mean, in the episode. The list goes on and on and on. Once I picked up a bass, you know, but I was like, I play bass. I, I, you know, what about me? Which became like my mantra for the next twenty years. What about me? Yeah, and I can uh, do it. Yeah, whether I could or not. So I didn't even have a bass. I borrowed a bass from my brother in law, and. um didn't like learned that you know they, they were like all right here's a here's a demo learn learn the first song and come come to practice next week and so then i was like okay i gotta get a bass borrowed a bass i learned all the songs you know and walked in and we ran through them just like that i didn't even know how a band you know started a song like i didn't know what was gonna happen i just was like all right here here goes the part. And then they would want to jam. And I was like, I didn't know what the shit to do, you know, like jam on the bass, <laughs> just hold, play a note. You know, I, I didn't know. So jam and a jam and a, yeah. but I, uh, but I nailed it and, and I got the gig and I was in that band for, a, for a long time. We, I made my first record with those guys and, and they're, you know, Great and that sort of dude. led you into a lot of the same. Met uh, a lot of people that I still. Yeah, know. a lot of people, a lot of connections that you not only that you still know that you actually involve in your current sort of project, which is cow trips. Because sure. you, 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 when you think I'm looking at the names of the bands, you know, Harvey Danger, one of my, you know, one of my favorite songs. Because the I don't know if anyone's seen the uh, TV show Peep Show. One right. of my favorite, you know, I love that. That was a theme song for a bunch of ep for a bunch of seasons. Uh, but flagpole, flagpole sitta, and uh, 
you you were in that band, Harvey Danger, and then and then a lot of the band members that you played with um, were either went on to create other bands or uh, were from other bands like Death Cab for Cutie and you know a ton of others, right? And yeah. and you're associated now. You're just one of the guys. It's weird. I mean, when you're young, you don't think. I mean, I didn't, you know, I'm just not that sharp. I, I was never thinking like build relationships and, and keep relationships. I was just a friendly guy and, and came from a little town. You know, I had this like hick inferiority complex and I just was like, so afraid that people were going to like, you know, like, I, like I didn't belong in the, in the city with the, with the smart, uh, the smart rockers for whatever reason i just thought well everyone must be they must know something i don't know you know i was i just wanted to meet everyone and learn everything i could learn right but i think it's that sincerity and that honesty that you have that that sort of drew you in that you know drew people into into your orbit i mean i think you gave some great advice i i was reading while i was doing the research for this you said the best advice you can give for being in a band is what don't be a dick. Yeah, yeah. I wish <laughs> something like that given me that advice a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you stay in a band? Well, just don't be a dick. Be be nice. Yeah. Be sincere. You know. And you yeah, mentioned really, that earlier. A, a a subpar player that is the coolest person that's easy to tour with that takes care of more than is expected of them is you know is almost more valuable in some ways than someone who is like a virtuoso player, but a total butthole. <laughs> you know? Dude, there it is. That's the takeaway. That's the, that's the quote, because you know what? It, it, it is about the hang. I say this a lot of times on in the trenches. Part of the reason why I started this podcast is to hopefully inspire people not just to start their guitar journey or their musical journey and by all the guests that we have on and hear their stories but it's it's also just to like for them to realize that it's yes you have to be good at your instrument to be a professional mus musician but you, you know what you also have to do you also have to fucking show up on time you also have to know how to hang out on a tour bus and what else do you have to do to be in you a have band? To not be a not be a pain in the ass you know, you have to be an asset or at least not be in the way, <laughs> you know, you don't have to be a, a tremendous asset so long as you're not in the way where you're like, oh, uh, I, I need to do this. Like, hold, I know we're at the truck stop and I know we've been here for 30 minutes and the bus is already fueled up and everyone's already got their food, but I forgot my chewing gum or whatever. <laughs> like, I have to go back in and you're just like, oh. He's got to go get his don't chew gum, gum. <laughs> you know what it, just you just be don't be in the way like just be cool and know know the music well in one way or another don't learn at practice practice is not for learning the songs rehearsal is for you show up at band rehearsal it's so that the band can get tight it's not so that you can fucking learn your parts like no you have to know your fucking parts the band yeah. gets or just by hanging yeah that's, that's great right. wow yeah well, one way or another that leads you to uh one of the bigger names that you've been associated with associated with over the years and that is the band loaded that yeah. has duff mckagan as its frontman. everyone knows duff as the basis for gnr but in loaded uh duff plays guitar he fronts it and um how did that whole relationship happen and sort of meeting with Duff? Because I know Duff is another Northwest sort of guy. You had to have met some point in the Seattle world. So I'll give you the quick and dirty. So I ended up quitting the eat the feeling band because they, it was a, like an all or nothing thing for, for them. And I was like, well, there are other things. Look at that. There are nice other thing. things that I want to do. You know, I want to, I want to play, I want to play a lot of different styles of music. I don't want to just play jammy music. Like I want to, I want to be in a punk band and I want to do this and that. So eventually I quit and I became, and I did get, I did get kicked out of one band because someone, and the guy said, I just didn't, it's the only band I've been kicked out of. 
You didn't cut the mustard or what happened? What do you say? No, I played just, he said, I didn't shake my ass enough. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> it's like, you know, just like, you're kind of just a, you're just a statue on stage. And I, and to be fair, I wasn't a hundred percent comfortable on stage at that point. You know, I was okay. still like working it out. So uh, walk away from that. It's a learning lesson. Well, the good news for that, just so you listening there on the podcast, uh, Vic Shalfon, our producer, he shakes his ass all the time while he's producing the show. So there's never Sweet. been a problem with that. So you nice. know, we will never have that conversation. Shake your tail feathers, babe. Shake your money maker. Uh, so I quit playing music. I go back to school. I last, you know, two or three weeks, and and I'm like, this. What am I doing? I quit. I get in another band by saying, what about me? You know, that's that's my way, what about me? So I get in this band, Nevada Bachelors. Nevada Bachelors eventually has the drummer, Jason Finn from the Presidents of the United States of America. Look at me with that's it. a great shot. Still oh with the glasses. Um, you know what, the, the, those horn rim glasses. The top, uh, right hand corner, also a big Raiders fan. Oh, okay. Like right. well, you know what? Just just so you um, guys know that are, if you're if you're listening on the audio podcast, you can't hear that. That's why we appreciate you listening on the audio podcast. But we'd like for you to go to the video, go to Ryan Roxy, uh, official Ryan Roxy, and then hit that subscribe button. But as you can see, I am wearing a Raiders uh, tank top now, but I'm wearing it inside out because I'm so ashamed. I'm so uh, ashamed of their loss yesterday. <laughs> it was again, again, uh, but yeah, like you were saying, those those horn rim glasses you have, um, you I love the style, but are, are they the same oh, yeah. ones? No, 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 no. Those things broke, and then I fixed them. I had them fixed, and then they were in a backpack, and the backpack was stolen, and then I found the exact pair of glasses on eBay, bought them. And then uh, broke those again. So then I just, here's the thing. Like I just now, I mean, like I said, I quit drinking. So I, I was going to say, people are going to come for for a podcast on couch riffs and they're going to hear the stories of cryonics and a lost uh, backpack. But yeah, man, what? this is, uh, you know, this is the, this is fun. This is how you do it. This is how you do it, folks. This is, and this is water now. Yeah. See, the other drink, this is, this is my dichotomy. I, I have to offset my old-fashioned with some water every once in a while. But we're getting to the point where yeah, somehow you quit this band and then you meet Duff McKagan. How does Duff that is, Duff plays bass for, for the Presidents of the United States of America World Tour. Now, this is 1998 or 99, and it was... It was a webcast concert. I, you can probably find it still. And it's like... That's they were ahead of their time. They were ahead of the COVID yeah. time. <laughs> way ahead. And so that's when I meet Duff. And I'm like, whoa, this is, this is incredible. They do this webcast at a studio where, the, where Nevada Bachelors had made a record with this guy, Martin Fevier. Martin Fevier, you know, a year later was making a record with Duff. And, you know, Martin Fevier is a great friend. And uh, I also knew the drummer, Jeff Redding, that was, that was playing on the record and was in the band Loaded at the time. And uh, I had heard about it. At the time, I was doing Harvey Danger. And maybe I was even doing Alien Crime Syndicate already. But And that band, like both of these things, I just said, they need, both of these guys needed guitar players. And I said, what about me? You know, Alien Crime Syndicate. I love that takeaway. What about me? Learn these couple of... Nobody ever invites me to do... Sh like, that you invited me to do something is like a fucking miracle. Like, but, nobody invites me to do anything. And here's so the thing. I want people to know about what you're... You know, what you've done and what you're doing now because it's okay. really, really fucking inspiring. And um, so, I mean, like I said, it, it, it's all about you on this podcast for sure, Mike Squires. I mean, thank you. Thank you. It's a great, it's a great honor. Love. Uh, <laughs> can you say that a little bit clearer and louder so I can use it as an ad? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I learn all the Alien Crime Syndicate songs on the whole album. You know, I show up and I try out on my actual birthday and they're like, yeah, you're in. 
Like every, everyone else that came to audition for the band showed up, didn't even learn a song. They were like, all right, teach me the songs. I was like, they, you have r recordings. Like I went out, I bought the records. I learned the songs. I want to be in the band. That's how you do it. You want it, you get it. You take it. You don't, you know, no one's going to be like, please be in my band. I'm going to teach you all the songs and everything. Oh. Show up. Be prepared. Yeah, be prepared. Yeah. So I, you know what? Great lesson. You know, and sometimes I, I, I use this as an analogy. We had Tommy Clefettos play. Uh, we were looking for a drummer because Eric Singer went back to Kiss for the Alice Cooper band. And those of you that are in the chat, you guys all know the Alice Cooper history, but you might not know this story. Tommy Clefettos came in. Um, I, we had seen him play with Ted Nugent. We loved Chuck, and I both loved his playing. We said, "Come on down and try out." He came down and tried out. We said, you know, here are the, here are the five songs that you need to learn to, to uh, audition. And then we were done with the five songs. We were already blown away. And he goes, so let's do the rest of the album. We go, what do you mean? He goes, oh, yeah, I learned the whole entire, I learned the entire set. Let's, let's, right. let's just run that. And then once he said, that's you know, how you, you had it. And that's how song. you, I mean, they say. Now we did get a little bit frozen. Hold on. You'll come back. Here what do you are. say, Vic? There you go. So they say you get, you get one chance to make a first impression. And, you know, I certainly, you know, leave a lot of diff you know, I'm not like a, not a calculated, uh, well-spoken person. I'm just kind of like fucking bumbling through at any given moment in my life. But that's the impression we, I'm making. But I'm learning the song. We still haven't gotten to the point where you get into loaded, and I'm, yeah, I'm so, like, uh, so I hit up, I hit up Martin, the guy that's making the loaded record, and I'm like, hey, I heard you guys have had every guitar player in Seattle come down and try to play on this record. Uh, what about me? You know, and he's like, well, you know, and you know, so far he's only seen me play in Nevada Bachelors, which is like a retro pop rock band, you know. And uh, he's like, well, you know, I suppose we could give it a try. And I was like, yeah, man, come on. What about me? I can do it. <laughs> like, you have no idea. I can totally do this. So this is one of those occasions where I have no opportunity to hear the music because it's it's not done. He can't email me something. It's I mean, he can maybe, but it's, it's 99 or 2000. Ideas. Yeah, it's yeah. ideas. So he just, he says, come down to the studio, bring a guitar. And, and I do, and I'm nervous as hell because, you know, Appetite for Destruction was a formative album for me, very yeah. important album to me. Yeah. So I show up, he brings, a, uh, brings up a song. I put a couple parts on it and he and I work really well together. Um, and he just, he pulls some stuff out of me and, and I have a couple of ideas and, and he's like, well, let's try this other song. And so I, I think I recorded on two or three songs and then that was it. I went, I left and then I get a phone call a couple days later and it's Duff. And I, of course, it's, you know, it's like the classic where I'm like, yeah, right. You know, fuck you, Jason. And, <laughs> and he's like, you thought he was messing with you. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was, you know, who, I don't know. I thought it was a joke because I hadn't heard anything, you know, I was like, well, they didn't like it. That's all right. I got it. I got my shot and it's Duff. And he's like, I loved what you did. Nobody in Seattle is playing like this. I can't, like, I'm really happy that I found you. Do you want to come down to the room and play some songs and, and see what happens? And I was like, absolutely, yes, absolutely. And then that was it. And good things happened because, you know what? What year was that? 2000? Yeah. 2000 up until present day, you guys have maintained that friendship that, yeah. uh, you know, and, and you've been, I know that you've been in and out of loaded a, a couple times, but it seems as though it's like, you're always his go-to guy when it comes to, uh, you know, Hey, I well, want to get this going again. Loaded is actually a band. So, which is super generous of Duff. Like, I mean, that's just kind of, you know, that's the kind of duty is. So it's very cool. Yeah, it's a it's a band band, um, which is great. But also like, you know, for people who don't understand how bands are just like any any business, right? So you're you're an employee or you're a 
or you're or you're not or you're a boss and they're hired serious... gun or banned yeah but yeah, yeah. But, but, but there are some sort of subtleties i could i could sure. maybe break it down when you say it's a band does does when you're on tour does duff stay in a in a suite and you stay in a regular room that could be a little bit of a difference i, I know that and, and it's totally justified sure. well i get it well you know we're not uh even steven equal partners you know there but you go. but we're partners yeah. yeah so and that's and that like i said that's a generous thing for him to do it's also a smart business thing for him to do because if yeah. he's you know if if he's not shelling out <laughs> salaries to people and depending on what kind of a tour you have like some tours are are really profitable other tours not profitable and you know that... but when it comes to sharing in the songwriting sharing oh, in yeah. the, the the whole uh the piece of the pie you know i'm not sure with the merch type of stuff but it does seem that when those guys and those type of guys that are that come from a bigger band form their own band it does seem that it's it, it's very cool of them to sort of include it and make it a band feeling. I was like, I'm I'm yeah. no, uh, I've 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 always said that I'm I'm in a I'm in a higher gun situation with Alice Cooper, but he makes me feel like a band member every single day because of the credit that he gives and the love and support that he sort of showers upon the band. He's always hypes up the band yeah. in interviews. And when we travel, we travel together. It's not like a division of church and state. So in that right. respect, I really do feel that the Alice Cooper band feels like a band vibe, but at the yeah. same time, we're hired guns because we know whose name is on the marquee. And, and there's a, there, there always is a little bit of that distinction. Don't you think? There's definitely that, like, I never lose sight of why we are in Germany or why we are in Japan. It's not like, it's not called Mike Squires is loaded. You know what I mean? And so. I was you know, in, I, they yeah, know yeah, yeah. me. No, they no, know no, me. I, yeah, yeah. The Banner Backs is really big here. Really the long winters was yeah. huge. I'm Ryan Roxy, and I've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar, and I want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you. Check out the System 12 Guitar Method. Hello, folks. Roxy here. Thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, hit the subscribe button or one of the videos around me to watch more. If you'd like to, please leave a comment. If you didn't like the video, maybe you'll forget how to type. Yeah.